Welcome back to Forge City Kitchen. This is Zat. Today I'm going to be talking about Fuel Cell Energy Incorporation. It goes by the ticker FCL. I'm going to go quickly through technical analysis to give you an insight in terms of where the price level is at the current time being, as well as traders' uh, psychology trading the stock. Let's jump right into it. So, after technical analysis, I'm going to make sure I, I mention anything you can find about this company, DD, uh, presentations, etc. So, taking a quick look into the chart of a one week perspective. We get to see it was due for a positive reversal and it's seen this massive jump uh, today uh, around 32 percent it's almost a multi-day runner uh, starting in all the way from two dollars and ten 542 so it's quite more significant than just a small 30 percent jump it has seen more around uh, roughly 150 percent now taking a quick look on the adx it shows in a very strong trend here well in percent are is actually really really over uh, bought although it has been from the last week as well and what we're looking here as well on the momentum looking strong now on the one day perspective we get to see a little bit of an amazing story uh, it looks like it actually seen a bit more of one two three four almost green days so four green days even though this is a red candle it has dropped quite significantly from where it started but it's still seen jump from the day before ADX shows in a strong potential. Willing percent are overbought, but it's ever it's been overbought ever since the 5th of November, down to the 210 as I mentioned. Momentum looks really strong, and um, MACD looks bullish. Moving averages are fully bullish in that case. Now we can take a quick look into a two-hour perspective. Just a quick hint: see if there's anything significant, and nothing significant except the ADX gives us a warning saying, "Hey, you might see a pullback here." But you get to see it's actually stabilized and uh, it's not dropping below uh, say the 509 to 487 mark moving average bands what we get to see is that it's way above there it's uh it doesn't seem that it's getting anywhere close but for the sake of the argument moving average band 291 on the top 265 in the middle and 238 on the bottom stochastic fast gives us a little bit of a warning saying hey be careful you might want to lock some profits here or you might not want to buy fully here just in case it does see a pullback and the chart here shows in the Fibonacci retracement uh, support sitting at the 490, below that 419, that 369. Resistance, the only resistance on the Fibonacci retracement is the 580. Now we can take a quick look into supports and resistances. So what we're going to do is all the way back here. What we're going to do, we're going to do one month to hour to try to find proper significant uh, supports and resistances. Current support sits at the 510. Below there, we're looking all the way to 421. Below there, we're looking at 395. Below there, we're looking at 76. Below 376, we're going down to 301. From 301, we go to 273. Significant resistance, it's only really one. 544. It cracks the 544, bingo. So that kind of gives us a little bit of uh, an understanding of where we're at. So that's 544 mark over here. Right now, it's just below it. It kind of poked in and out from it, but it's not stabilizing on a two-hour perspective at that mark. Now let's jump right into anything we can find about this one. First off is institution. Sorry, uh, SEC filings. This was one way before. This is uh, mainly their 10Q, so uh, we can go towards the 10Q right now. But I'll choose to do it later on in the video. So for this one here, sorry for going quickly and almost blinding you here. Uh, it shows in that there is additional shares that were basically reported for a sale of 243 that was all the way back in September uh, etc regarding the offerings as well offering close October 2nd so that's all done uh, misleading claims of short sellers that's already done October 6th it's way behind us right now um, and basically it also received about the US Department of Energy project award uh, Fuel Cell Energy Incorporation is a global leader in fuel cell technologies with a purpose of utilizing its proprietary state-of-the-art fuel cell platform to enable a world empowered by clean energy analysis a selection by the u.s department of energy uh or sorry office of energy efficiency and renewable energy uh basically they were given eight million eight million dollars funding award support design and manufacturing of per source electro uh, electrolysis platforms capable of producing off uh, sorry capable of producing off hydrogen wording a little bit weird there but we get the point Next on, what we get to see is additional warrants, etc. So nothing significant. Institutional buyers, a little bit mixed on this one. Call puts, call puts. So they're basically trying to go on with a square, simple trading call put. Pre Morgan, uh, 
Chase and Co. had to put way back, um, but institutional buyers aren't really biting onto this any at any significant level. Insider buyers, it looks like it's quiet as well. So we can jump in towards their website. This is a website here uh, with latest news as well. So that was the project award here mentioned. Uh, let's jump right into their quarter three. So this is their presentation. So I thought, hey, you might be able to pick up some of the information here and throw it back at you. So service license, 44% of highly visible to recurring revenue, 1% for the product generation, 23%. And advanced technology goes around 32%. They have around 300 employees, employees, three continents, global plant installations, around 59 of them. Uh, we can move on as well, but quickly we'll look into the global customers, um, including Pfizer, Radisson, Pacific Gas and Electrical, Electric Company, etc. So we can move on. Today's message, continuing progress against our project backlog, fully reopened main facility in Torrington CT, the safety first approach to resuming operations expected to operate at an annualized run rate of approximately 21 million watts during the first three months ending October 31st, 2020. Completed majority of the work on Project US Navy Base in Gorton CT, waiting third party study and third party work to be completed prior to the commission and commercial operations. Then uh, Bernardino progressing well with major civil work complete. Revenue off around 18.7 million versus 22.7. Quarter 3 uh, for year 2019 included 20 million related to licenses agreement with ExoMobile Research and Energy and Co Company. So that's why you can get to see a little bit of the drop. Uh, it's related to the ExoMobile license agreement. Terminated license agreement with POSCO Energy. Uh, commenced marketing fuel energy products with services directly in the Korean and broader uh, Asian market. So from my understanding, Fuel Cell Energy won a uh, $200 million uh, suit on Pasco and then Pasco ended up counter uh, suing at $800 million. I'm not sure exactly the outcome of that, but uh, that's something where it didn't really end up nicely with Pasco Energy. Enhanced liquidity by $70.1 million through add the market shares of common st uh, stocks, strengthen leadership, etc. So this is a quick look off their power generation modules. Uh, so the revenues, as I did mention, exactly the difference there. Gross uh, loss or profit, they hit around 3.1 million in loss versus 8 million in quarter three FY 2019. But it really goes on back to the gross profit from EMRE license agreement of 10 million dollars, as I mentioned before. So operating expenses, they decreased 16% to 7.6 million compared to 9.0 million. Uh, in quarter three last from operations we're comparing it 10.8 million versus 1.1 million in quarter three uh, fy 20 F fy 2019 a big comparison is that 10 million so really if you put that into here you'd be 11.1 so very much the same comparable level so moving on we can get to see in terms of the backlog here they do have just a little bit backlog less than the one from 2019 in terms of different things like net loss, uh, it doesn't look good on paper for 2020, but you got to keep in mind that $10 million going towards the license or from the licensing. Significant improvement in liquidity, they have around $107.3 million in total cash. Unrestricted cash off around $51.1 million, $41.0 million restricted cash and cash equivalents. And that can kind of gives us a little bit of an insight in terms of the cash. So, next steps. So they have transforms, um, strengthen and grow. So build a uh, soil. Sorry, build a solid foundation, financial foundation that is. Delivered cost saving, realized annualized operating savings of around 15 million uh, through the restructuring of their business, refined debt, capital deployment, commercial excellence, operating excellence, sales growth, innovation, and geographic geographic uh, and market expansion. And that's more targeted market towards uh, Europe. Korea and across Asia. Next thing we're looking at is um, a little bit off their different sectors here that they're looking for, kind of pick on distributed generation, uh, distributed hydrogen, hydrogen and energy storage, and carbon capture. These three are really important for me because that's uh, when the US basically, come January, Biden will uh, take an office and there's going to be a lot more push towards green energy and hydrogen fuel, uh, carbon capture, so 
that really puts it right on the good spot there especially with different companies like trucks and stuff like Hylon uh, targeting that kind of factors so future goals is achieve grid pricing parity positive EBITDA uh, sorry EBITDA positive free cash flow and deliver turn on invested capital so all in all that does look quite positive in terms of their business uh, goals now we can move on to key investment highlights uh, actually we did go through that in the start so what we're gonna do here is move on towards the press releases and what we get to see first things first this is a website so I do recommend you go on and play with it it gives you an insight towards you know what you're looking at now moving on towards the presentation and try to basically go through anything that we haven't gone this year is in numbers in terms of revenues instead of percentage um, so it gives you a little bit of well, numerical values right sustainable clean energy that's their goal here renewable energy exceeds coal by the first time providing 23 percent off us power generation grid resilience and reliability carbon reduction and regulatory support by the us uh, with more than 90 cities and towns having committed to sourcing the electricity from 100 percent renewable so they're aware of that and they're kind of moving towards it service market is around 5 billion equipment market is 4 billion for distributed hydrogen you get to see they're really focusing on four different global markets but as i said distributed power distributed hydrogen carbon capture and three uh, sorry and uh, storage or uh bw storage and so represents one percent of the total market opportunity as the current levels but they are really going down with it Next thing we're looking at, is there anything different here? No. Same thing that we see before. Why invest? You have a little bit of a nice segment there saying, hey, why are you uh, answering a little bit of questions or giving a little bit of a brief? Why invest into their company? There's a market need and they have a solution. Basically, that's <laughs> as simple as any business kind of perspective or model. Now, there are different products that they have for uh, generation source. Uh, sorry, sorry. Pure source 1500, which is 1.4 megawatts of clean and affordable power. Uh, we're looking at first source 3000, which is 2.8 megawatts. They also have a little bit of a jacked one. The uh, sure source 4000 of around 3.7 megawatts. Uh, that's a little bit of a tongue twister. Sure source. Anyway, moving forward, uh, generating power via chemistry and not burning. And so some of the products or the product idea including either carbon capture or generating electricity by basically using either natural gas or renewable biogas into electricity heat and water so the only basically pollutant is not really a pollutant which is water so there's that um, the next thing is basically versatility fuel flexible solutions for instance they have the california wastewater treatment plant Fuel energy is now capturing the biogas and making it clean energy, so there's that, so they're very flexible, very aware of how to extract more energy for our use. Fuel cells cleanly and effectively converts chemical energy from hydrogen-rich fuels into electrical power and highly quality, or sorry, and high quality heat via electrochemical process that is efficient and emits water rather than pollutants, as there's no burnings off the fuel. Amazing bit more news here about for instance uh, how the source source capture works so how it works is the exhaust flue gases from the coal or gas fired system are fed into a cathode side of the fuel cell replacing the ambient air used in typical applications CO2 in the exhaust transfer to the anode side where it is much more concentrated and easy to separate CO2 from the anode exhaust steam is purified chilling the stream uh, steam to extract the CO2 liquid this enables a cost-effective capture as a purified CO2 can then be transported by pipelines for enhanced oil recovery applications or underground storage. A little bit more technical there than I would have liked, but you know, sometimes it's really nice to get to understand the technology behind it. And the last kind of products they have is hydrogen. Um, this is more of recoveries in terms of between carbon capture and pipeline. And that is mainly to be used again at energy so ed what do you think invest or not definitely at a 52 week level high and this massive jump it's a little bit scary i did go on twitter today and i said hey uh, the volume on this one is amazing and around this level i think 
said, hey, 505, buy above, uh, or sorry, buy around 515, stop limit at 505, and um, continue on to the run. So he took that one, probably be going anywhere from, say, 10%. So if we put on this line over here, right onto here, as if we're talking right now, we're talking about 7% higher. But anyway, if you don't follow me on Twitter, make sure you do that right now. Now, should I invest into this one? There's a lot of different parameters going into this one. And definitely, it's being hyped. It's seeing a lot of different uh, interest in this. And this is amazing. But you need to kind of get an insight in terms of short interest versus long-term in interest. You need to be careful onto this one here. So if you received uh, or you bought in from lower, you need to look at a pullback and you know, throw a little bit in. Don't go 100% in. Try to scale in your investment. Because yes, I do think this one has a future. But that's a little bit when uh, the US perhaps gets a new administration. A little bit more push towards the green energy. Uh, and um, a bit more towards renewable carbon capture, etc. Back into uh, focusing on yeah the environment, etc. Uh, and, and then I can probably say, yes, definitely this one has a future. But... The only problem is, what level do you think that is priced in? Do you think it's priced in at 580? Theoretically, yes, this one can go to six, seven dollars. Sure, but you need a pullback because after this happens, guess what? We're still got uh, a bit of November left, December, and January before you even get any regulations that push towards green energy. So keep that in mind. But I definitely think that this one has a future. But be careful, below 508 or below 505, if it does break through, that's a dangerous mark to stay at. What do you think about the sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Should I subscribe and like? You have a wonderful day.